Item 5 of the agenda. So item 6 then is the Department of Justice main estimates. The Department has provided a written paper setting out its position for the main estimates which will be approved in the Budget No. 3 Bill uh, 2020 scheduled for introduction later this month. The Department's position reflects the outcome of the June monitoring round and the Department has advised that it is forecasting a break-even position on the allocations that have been agreed to date. The written paper also provides information on the review of the financial process an update on the in-year position, including COVID-19 pressures, an update on information provided to the Northern Ireland Audit Office, and an update on the annual report and accounts for 2019-20. The Department uh, will provide a briefing on October 2020 monitoring round at next week's meeting. So if members are content, we'll note the Department's main estimates position and the update on the range of financial matters uh, that have been presented. And we'll go into this in more detail next week. OK, item 7. Annual renewal of Secretary of State's discretion powers, uh, 172 to 183 of your meeting pack. Following the devolution of justice matters uh, relating to national security uh, remain the responsibility of the Secretary of State. Uh, during the preparation for the devolution of justice, the need for a special security related information handling arrangement in the Northern Ireland Prison Service was identified. It was decided that a legislative instrument in the form of a direction would be created. The direction sets out arrangements for how Department of Justice officials, when dealing with operational prison matters that remain in the reserve field, are to be treated as officers of the Secretary of State, subject to his direction and control, and how they handle protected information. The direction has been renewed each year, uh, with no amendment having been made since 2011. The Minister of Justice is of the view that the, the direction remains fit for purpose, that it does not need amended, and that it should be renewed from October 2020. Uh, before she agrees to the renewal, the Minister uh, would appreciate the views of the committee. So, members, it's just to seek your views or whether people are content um, to note the intention to renew the Secretary of State's direction unaltered for a further 12 months from October 2020. Okay, noted. Content item 8, um, pages 185 to 3112 of the meeting pack. The Department of Justice and uh, Department of Health have jointly been develop developing proposals for a regional care and justice campus for children and young people. This follows completion of a scoping study by the Department of Justice in 2015-16 and the subsequent recommendations in the report on the review of regional facilities for children and young people published in December 2018. It is proposed that the new campus will comprise a secure, secure care centre made up of the existing woodlands and lakewood sites and multi-agency satellite provision including a step-down facility and a community-based provision. It also proposed that a multi-agency panel will be established to make decisions about admissions to the secure care centre and a new relationship-based trauma-informed therapeutic practice framework will apply on the campus and across all settings for looked-after children. Due to the cross-cutting nature of the proposals, the executive's agreement to proceed to a full public consultation will be sought. The draft consultation can be found uh, in the meeting pack. Currently, it is anticipated that the public consultation will run for 12 weeks from mid-October, and officials from the Department of Health and Justice will be available to brief committee members during the consultation period if members were to find that helpful. Subject to the outcome of the consultation, the Joint Health and Justice Programme team will continue to work with all relevant stakeholders on implementation of the proposals. A number of the proposals being consulted on may require new legislation or amendments to existing legislation. The proposals have also been referred to the Health Committee, and the departments have indicated that they will keep both committees updated as work progresses, and members have been asked not to circulate the consultation document as it is still in draft form. So it is for members to indicate that they are content to note the draft consultation document, the proposals uh, contained uh, therein, and unless there is any further information members need at this stage, otherwise it will be an area that we will come back to pending the consultation being completed. Linda? Um, just this looks on, on the face of it to be an excellent proposal, so um, obviously we'll be looking at it in more detail. Could I just maybe suggest that we get the Children's Commissioner in at some point to give us a brief on, on, on her view of it? I'm not asking, for, I, I think I would prefer to see it once the consultation goes out. Um, yeah. And maybe even whenever. 
the responses is done, but I, I would like to have that conversation with her about that this specific issue, but also in general, if we were to get some information from her around how we could improve things for children and young people within the remit of, of this committee, what we could be doing as, as a committee in terms of proving, improving outcomes and obviously circumstances for young people. Okay, well if I can just break that up into two, there's one that the Children Commissioner's input into this, mm -hmm. um, I think it would be good to see what her response is, um, I assume that the office will respond to it, um, and, and then the committee will obviously want to engage more in this, and then there's the broader context, um, and so we can try and fit that in in due course in the future. Yeah, I'm not saying that needs to be in the immediate, obviously we have yeah. a packed schedule over yeah. the next we read it, but I, I would like to see her in some stage just to have that conversation. Okay. Thank you. I, item nine, consultation on the law on child sexual exploitation, the summary of the response next steps. The department has provided a summary of the responses to the consultation on the review of the law on child sexual exploitation and the next steps. The review met a long standing uh, commitment by previous ministers to consider a wide range of legislative issues arising from the report of the Independent Inquiry on Child Sexual Exploitation in Northern Ireland 2014 and the Justice Committee report uh, on Justice in the 21st Century that was published in 2015. The purpose of the review was to access the adequacy and effectiveness of the current law to protect children from sexual exploitation and the extent to which current offences remain appropriate, particularly in light of the way in which technology has changed how perpetrators now target and abuse children. The Department plans to bring forward four proposals for legislative change arising from the review in the Justice Miscellaneous Provision Bills. Um, these will provide for the removal of legislative references to child prostitute, child prostitution and child pornography, the inclusion of live streamed images in CSE offences, a new offence of adults masquerading as children online and a new offence of obscuring the summary sets out how the other issues covered in the consultation will be taken forward. The Minister also intends to raise the issue of using online anonymity to harass with the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sport and the Home Office, who have primary responsibility for online harm. Um, the Minister plans to publish the summary document at the end of the month. So it's there, members, um, for noting by way of the summary of responses and the proposed way forward on each of the issues covered. Members are content at this stage. Yes, Rachel. Um, thanks, Chair. No, certainly I read this with interest. There's obviously a lot in it in terms of uh, potential change coming up, but obviously um, if we could have the department here to discuss those four issues that they are going to be taking forward in the miscellaneous bill and the relevant um, relevant officers on those, because obviously miscellaneous bill will cover a number of issues, but I certainly would uh, welcome um, discussion with relevant officers on those four, as well as the other things that were in that um, that consultation. Yeah. No, I'm content to, to for that. Okay. Item ten. Department of Justice draft corporate plan and business plan. The department has provided a copy of these documents. The annual business plan is the second year of a three-year corporate plan that was developed for the start of the 2019-20 financial year. The Department has advised that development of the 2021 business plan was originally put on hold due to, due to the COVID-19 outbreak, the response to which uh, also raised challenges. The draft plan outlines a number of specific actions in direct response to COVID-19, and these can be found um, in the meeting pack. The Department has indicated that the success of delivering the objectives and recommendations <coughs> in the plan will be highly dependent on how the current COVID-19 situation unfolds and, if necessary, subject to further review and amendment throughout the year. So members, it's there for information. Okay, if members are content, we will um, request a written update on the current progress, progress and work being undertaken in relation to each of the measures in the business plan from the department. Item 11. At our meeting on the 9th of June, the committee considered correspondence from the minister advising the department was considering restarting the accreditation process for community-based restorative justice organisations, which had been paused in 2016. In doing so, the Department has uh, found out that at the time of devolution of placing and justice functions in 2010, the transfer of functions omitted to include the statutory functions in relation to accreditation of community-based restorative justice schemes in Northern Ireland, and as a consequence, uh, the functions are retained by the Secretary of State. 
The Department had advised that work was ongoing with the NIO to agree both a short-term fix, which involved entering into an agency agreement with the um, Secretary of State to allow the Department to exercise the powers set out in the relevant uh, legal framework, and then a permanent fix. The Department has provided an update in relation to the permanent fix, which is to rectify the situation by obtaining the consent of the Secretary of State to develop a legislative remedy by way of provision in the Justice Miscellaneous Provisions Bill. So, members, it's there um, f for noting that we're content um, that the intention of the Department is to legislate in the Justice Bill to provide a permanent fix to this situation. Yes, I'm, I'm content to, to note that. I just think that we, as a committee, should be emphasising the need to um, for the current sort of justice schemes to be central in developing the training because they've, they've been in place, and, and, I, and I've said this within the policing board, and I think I've probably said it in the committee before as well, the whole benefit of the community restorative schemes is that they start from the bottom up, and we need to ensure that that continues to be the case. They must start from the bottom up. That's why they work. OK. Correspondence. Um, there's six items of correspondence, and I'll draw attention to couple of them. Item 7, there's correspondence from the Director of the PPS advising that it has taken steps to contact 17 victims, um, informing them that the convictions of 15 individuals prosecuted in the Magistrate Court for a sexual offence between 2009 and 2017 are to be set aside as a result of a legislative error which caused them to be invalid. A change to the law in 2019 inadvertently means that certain types of offences can no longer be prosecuted in the Magistrate's Court and can only be dealt with by the Crown Court. So members will be aware of the media around this. Uh, I know there's a number of urgent orals. The matter of the day has been submitted. Um, without making too much commentary, because members, I think, have quite clearly made that clear in different press releases and so on, I do think the Minister should be making an urgent oral statement on Monday, um, responding to urgent oral question uh, or even a matter of the day, subject to the Speaker's, um, subject to the speaker's approval. But um, the Minister, I think, should be taking the initiative and providing an urgent oral, and that would allow all members of the House um, to be able to, to deal with this. Um, and notwithstanding that, I think it is a, an issue that we as a committee um, will have to, to get involved in to try and establish the information and the facts around this. Um, so I would be recommending that as a committee we would write to the Minister asking her to make an urgent oral statement on Monday about this and expressing our deep concern um, as to how this situation has occurred. Um, PPS have been aware of this from 2018, from two years. and. And we weren't made aware of it until yesterday by the PPS, and I've noted that it's the PPS um, that have done the media on this, and yet it was a departmental failure, um, which then wasn't communicated to the relevant criminal justice agencies, and that to me requires uh, the department to take re responsibility and leadership of this. And the minister wasn't responsible then, but is responsible now for how the department responds, and I think she needs to take that responsibility. So if members are content, we'll write to the minister asking her to make an urgent oral, and then we'll need to consider what else we as a committee can do. Rachel? Thanks, Chair. No, certainly agree with that. Um, my primary concern is if there is any, first of all, to the, the impact on, on victims, but if there is any public protection issues arising from this in terms of monitoring of people, and if that still stands legally. Um, I was going to raise it with the Chief Con earlier on. Again, we ran out of time, so I appreciate there was a lot in that. But that would be a prime concern of mine if there was any issues in terms of PSNI or monitoring and public protection as the utmost importance. Yeah. Yes, Linda. I, I support the call for the Minister to make a statement. Just to clarify for each other, as far as I have read and some of the stuff, there's at least one, but it, it could be two, that yes, there is an issue where, where they were on the register and now they won't be. Um, it's not an issue according to reports for the rest, but all the more important why we need 
the, the statement so that the Minister can address all of those issues and we can have the opportunity to ask the, the questions. I would also like an update from the Minister um, in relation to the issue in both McGabry and Hyde Bank prison where the, the prisoners have, have started a protest. Um, and regardless of any of our views of, of, of the individuals, they have a right to be looked after as prisoners and their families have a right to know what's going on. So I think that it's important that we just maybe get some some information from the Minister and get an update around what's what's happening within both prisons. So I've just seen that the, the three women in High Bank have also joined the protest. So a bit of concerns around that for a number of issues for the, for the individuals themselves, for their families and their loved ones, but also then for the overall harmony within the, the prison system because I mean staff have to work in these conditions as well and it heightens tensions without mm. a shadow of a doubt so we need to find out what, what is going on. I have no problem in, in asking the department for an update as to what's going on with the, the protest and Row and, and Hyde Bank. Um, to, to square off the issue on the PPS and, and these cases, um, we'll write to the, the Minister um, asking for that urgent statement um, to be made in the Assembly on Monday, um, the basis of which we want to know how it went wrong and what actions being taken to investigate it and, and the issues around um, concerns to do with the sex offenders register and, and things like that. Um, but I, I really want the Minister to be making a statement in the Assembly. Obviously this committee can call the Minister to, to to come before it, um, and, and that is something that we may wish to do. Um, but I do think she needs to actually go into the Assembly um, in the first instance and outline how this is being dealt with. Um, I, these victims deserve an apology um, as well, and other ministers, when they're not responsible, um, still have apologised on behalf of the Criminal Justice Agency. I do believe that the Minister for Justice does need to uh, issue an apology on behalf of the Criminal Justice Agency, um, agencies for the, the failings that took place back in 2009, long before she was there. Um, so there's a range of things that I think we're going to have to consider in respect of that issue with um, this legislative error, as it's been described. Um, so we'll write to the Minister um, asking her to make that statement. Uh, and happy that the committee would also ask for an update in respect of the protest and and how that's being managed. Members content? Um, are you content that we action then the other items in correspondence as outlined in the clerk's memo? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Chair, can I just... Yes, um, Rachel. Just one, one issue was on the Public Accounts Committee inquiry into mental health and the criminal justice system. Was there any particular reason why the committees decided to no longer undertake the inquiry? For the, P, for the PAC? Yeah. I don't know. Just obviously mental health in the criminal justice system is a very large and worrying issue and it touches on everything and, and we, we've looked at mental health um, in terms of prison officers before um, but also mental health of prisoners and everybody else that's in the, within the system then as well. It's just, I'm just wondering if there has been any indication of why that has stopped. Happy to ask. You can ask. I suspect they might have reviewed their work programme, mm. just in light of, I think, they weren't holding so many meetings before the summer, so they may well have just reviewed their work programme, but we can ask if you want. Okay. And the only other chairman's business I have was the meeting of the CLG and um, moving back to a more normal schedule for the beginning of October, which we talked about right at the start of the meeting. So. Um, if members are content, we're going to to move from the current arrangements back to the two o'clock arrangement from next week. Thank you. Can we just check? If, I mean, I know I was the one that wanted it in the afternoon, so I, I absolutely still want that. But if it can be even accommodated slightly earlier, it's just to accommodate people, I suppose, that on the longer meetings that we're not maybe here at six or seven o'clock, that you're only here to five. Well, if we had to start at the day at two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of that, particularly given that we are going to have another number of pieces of legislation coming before. So if there is a potential for it starting earlier, that's great. If there's not, there's not. There's nothing yeah. to do about it. But I know that the Finance Committee does start at half twelve. 
Mm -hmm. So where can we accommodate the do do? We'll, we'll explore what options there are. Um, I'm just, I'm, I am aware there's a lot of pressure in committee rooms at the minute, so we'll explore what, what, what is available and what we can do. Any other business? No other business then. Um, a meeting will take place. We have it. Is it two? Is that the time we're going for? Oh, sorry, Tuesday. That's Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the meeting next Tuesday on the victims. Tuesday. Yes. Yeah, sorry. There's a meeting. There, we do with a meeting on Tuesday, um, twelve forty-five p.m. and that's at room thirty. On. Okay, and then we'll have another one on Thursday. Okay. Thank you, members. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29.